All right, so I have a situation here. We have some three quarter inch solid that we're gonna go over the top of. Now this stuff is, the homeowner doesn't want it. Now I know I'm gonna get comments about this. So bring them on. The people don't want the hardwood. They don't like hardwood. Scratches, gouges, dents, too easy. They have animals and pets. That's why they wanna get rid of it. Not everybody's a hardwood floor lover, okay? But I welcome the comments on you telling me that I shouldn't have them. I mean, here's some examples right there of some gouges. It's just, it's a hard floor to, to, to keep up. And with vinyl plank and laminate the way it is right now, why not get rid of this, okay? So anyway, we have a two layer subfloor here. So this is an older house. It's built somewhere in the 80s. It's got a two layer subfloor, which means there's two layers of subfloor to get the thickness of the proper strength of your subfloor. Now they used to do this back in the 70s and 80s. Now over here on the three quarter inch hardwood side, they have one layer and then they put the three quarter inch hard, hardwood on top of it. On this side, they have a layer of plywood underneath and then they put this cheap particle board on top of it. Now particle board is not a good product, it isn't. But this particle board that we're going over is in pretty good shape and we're gonna save it, we're gonna leave it. But we are gonna go over the top of it with a quarter inch hard hardwood. It's not a birch, but it's a hardwood underlayment. And the reason why is because we have a situation where this is higher than this side over here. And so we're gonna build this floor up using some of this quarter inch underlayment, which actually is a little less than a quarter inch. And then we'll get the proper height that we need once we put this down. Okay, I just wanna jump in here right now and just talk because this is one of the most common issues that I come across with people asking me questions, people in my members area on my website, where they have situations where they have ceramic tile in several different areas of their installation. And some of them have a lot of ceramic tile, like the entire kitchen and dining room, and maybe there'll only be a couple of areas in the house where they're gonna be installing this new plank where there isn't any. And so is the option better to build the floor up? Well, this is a situation where I have a living room that's surrounded by three quarter inch hardwood that it just makes more sense just for us to build it up than be then removing things. Now, this is a particle board and I absolutely hate particle board. And to be honest with you, if this was anything other than a floating floor that we were gonna install over this, I would have told the homeowner, no, we have to pull up that particle board. We have to get rid of it and get down to the bare subfloor and start building from there because that's the only way that I'm gonna believe in that floor. The, the only way that I'm gonna get the solid foundation that I'm gonna warranty and know when I walk away that it's gonna hold up. But this is a, a floating floor, okay? I am using a quarter inch underlayment here in this situation where you're gonna see, and we're using a staple that is gonna be an inch and a quarter. Now underneath I have a half inch um, particle board and underneath that particle board, there's a 5 8 plywood. On top of that, I'm gonna be putting a quarter inch uh, sub or uh, underlayment. So I'm gonna use an inch and a quarter staple. Now what that is gonna do is that's gonna drive through that underlayment, through the particle board, almost all the way through that last layer of subfloor, and I'm gonna have a solid foundation there. It's gonna be secure. Plus this is really gonna help with all the squeaks that were in there in between those subfloors. So what I'm saying is maybe if you have a bathroom that has tile in it, don't, don't get lazy by just not taking that out. Extreme situations where you have a lot of tile or different situations where you have, or, or even a, 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 um, a vinyl with a quarter inch underlayment under there, sometimes that's just gonna be easier just to put the elbow grease in, guys tear those little areas out instead of building things up. Because one of the things that you definitely need to be careful when you're building a floor up is that the outside doors, the exterior doors are gonna open still. So you wanna be sure that you're checking those kinds of things. You don't wanna cut every door in the house, cause yourself more work than what maybe you could have by just tearing out a little bit of flooring somewhere. But anyway, 
I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do here to build this floor up. This can be applied to other thicknesses of subfloors and I will talk about that more towards the end of the video. So stick around if you are the one who needs more than a quarter inch buildup. All right, I want you to take a look at the floor here. You can see, I'm gonna show you how to do some quarter inch underlayment here. You can see how the sheets of, are running a certain direction here. Now you don't have to go the same direction or even opposite, it really doesn't matter. What you wanna do with a quarter inch underlayment is you wanna just lay it out so that it's gonna be easiest for you, meaning not having a bunch of small pieces. And so I'm gonna run it this way, so it's gonna be opposite of how they put this layer that you see on the floor, but I could lay it the same way. But if I was gonna do that, what I would try to do is I would try not to line these seams up, like you see right here. I wouldn't want to run this the same way and have the seams right on top of each other. If anything, I'd want to scoot it over so that the seams just weren't going to be right on top of each other. So you can see how I just started over here. I, I were, I'm working my way away from this fireplace. I laid out two pieces here. And then what I did is I, what I cut off of here, I put right here. I could have put it down on the other end. Either way, it doesn't matter. Now with underlayment, it's a little different than doing a normal subfloor. What you want to do is you want to put the joints together tight. You can have a little bit of a gap if you want, but you don't need to leave like an eighth inch gap. And I will tell you, however, a lot of times with this quarter inch underlayment <coughs> that it's not always perfectly square. So when you try to fit them together perfectly, it might not happen that way. But I just want to go through and kind of just show you a few little things here that I do when I'm, in, when I'm using quarter inch underlayment, you want to staple every four to six inches. And then on the seams, you want to staple every inch. Now I'm using a little bit longer of a crown staple here. This is an inch and a quarter. And the reason why I'm using an inch and a quarter is because I want this staple to go through the underlayment through the first layer of my subfloor into the second layer. So I have a quarter inch plus a half inch, and then I have five eighths underneath that. So the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm trying to kill two birds with one stone here, and I'm trying to take away some squeaks that we have in the floor here. And by stapling it like I'm going to, that's going to take away those squeaks and make this a nice solid floor. Now, after you get a few rows laid out, I dry lay them. I get them put together so everything is nice and square. I also measure around to make sure that we're straight on some walls because there's always gonna be something crooked in your house, right? And then once I do that, and I kind of get everything where it's supposed to be, I'll go around and I'll staple some corners. I'll just throw a few staples in. Just to kind of get it set into place. So a lot of times I like to work the bubbles out. So I'll start here and work my way that way. So one of the things that I like to make sure is that I'm not taking too big of a bite with my saw. No, this is pretty basic stuff. So just letting you know, I just went through and I got my saw set. So it's just barely going through. You could set a little deeper than that even, but it's a lot easier to cut this stuff when you just have it set for the right depth. thing with quarter inch plywood is it's a lot flimsier than cutting anything thicker type of plywood or OSB so you have to kind of get creative with the saw because it's not really that firm but again keeping the blade at the depth that's close to the thickness is really going to help on cutting it with a circular saw. 
All right, so we've been taking our pieces that we cut off and then we're using them for the next starter now. Like I said, this is underlayment, so it doesn't have to follow any specific pattern and it helps you with not having any waste. So I got a little jog in this wall here. I just wanna show you a little trick that I use. So I'm just marking right where the corner is. I just marked a line. Now I'm measuring to see how far of a distance I am from where I'm ending to where I'm at now. And we're at about an inch and three quarters. So if I come over here to the wall now and I make a mark at an inch and three quarters, I already did this down here, but I just go all the way down and I do that. And maybe add a 16th of an inch, so inch, inch and three quarters big. And I do this in a few different spots so that if the wall is a little crooked, this is gonna help on being able to follow the, the wave of the wall. Okay, I wanna show you a, a couple spots here where we're working in a tight area. Right now I'm drilling a hole that this plywood needs to go around a pipe. Now this could apply in a bathroom too, wherever you have water lines doing things like this. I'm just cutting off the backside of this now. I'm tossing that away, I'm not even gonna use that. And you can see I still have a quite a, tight area here that I need to squeeze into. Well, because we're not at the mercy of the joist here where we need to secure this floor to the joist, we can again cut this however we want. So you can see how I cut this piece to fit. Now I, I wasn't able to be able to squeeze it in there without damaging the walls. I needed to slide it underneath that radiator, get around that pipe, and get around that wall that you see I notched around. So it was just easier for me to cut it. So just wanted to share a couple of these tips that will help you out while you're installing quarter inch alignment. Told you, I've showed this in a lot of videos, but I told you this tool is something you wanna buy. It's one of the best tools that I have. Okay, so we're all done. We have this last piece of underlayment to put in. And then I'm gonna go around and do some floor prep so that it dries overnight. Now, this whole room that we're doing right now, tearing out everything that you've seen today has taken us most of the day, getting all the trim and stuff off. So plan for a good full day for something like this. Okay, so maybe your subfloor, your buildup that you need to do needs to be thicker. Maybe you need to do a half inch. Now, it's very common that I run into a lot of situations where I have to install half inch plywood to be able to build up the floor to something. And the way that I do it is I do it exactly like what you're seeing here. Now there's already the support of the subfloor underneath. So do I need to make sure that I screw into the studs if I put a half inch plywood in? That could be argued. Now I don't. If I can, I will. But what I'm saying is if you staple it like I showed you inside this video, every four inches, every inch on the seams, and you go a step farther before, and you put some PL400 underneath that, where you go around the entire perimeter of the plywood, and then every foot run a bead across the back or on the floor before you set the plywood down. The glue and the staples are gonna make that a solid floor. It's not gonna go anywhere. It's not like we're using this for support where it needs to be on top of the studs. You could also use some screws, some sheetrock screws to get through if you want to do that on the seams for a little extra support. Now, if you get up to three quarter inch, I just want you to know that these underlayment staples only come an inch and a half at the most. And you need to be sure that if you buy one of these that it does go, that you can hold an inch and a half staple because these staples are, these underlayment staplers can be a little funky on how big of a staple that they'll take. So be sure that yours says an inch and a half on there. Now, yes, you could do a three quarter inch plywood too, this same exact way. I would probably try to find some of the joists to screw into also, but maybe not all of the plywood needs to be screwed into the joists. I would still use the staple method where I'm going every inch, every four to six inches on, in, on the interior of that sheet. And then I would definitely use PL 400 or something even better. I like the eight times stronger. It's more expensive, but the eight times stronger, and it also sets up quick. 
that is really a good premium product. I use that on all my steering hoses. I like to use the four times stronger for sure. Um, PL400 is just a little less expensive. You can probably buy a case of it if you're doing a large area for pretty cheap. Anyway, if you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know. Also, be looking for the next video. I'm going to do some more floor prep on this vinyl plank job, and we're going to put that in there where I'm going to show you how to use Ardex Feather Finish or Henry's 549. We're going to fill in some joints. We're going to fill in some dips. I'm going to show you how to find those. I'm also going to show you a few other things on prep, so you won't want to miss that. Be sure to check out that video. It should be out fairly soon after this one, a few days anyway. All right, guys. God bless you. I just want to pray for you right now, and I pray that your projects go well. I pray that they go problem-free. I pray for you and your family, and I just pray that God blesses you with his never-ending grace. And I pray for these things in Jesus' name. God bless you. Hit that subscribe button if I've earned it. Hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. Hit that bell if you want to be notified by more videos or new videos. Again, I'm Joe Latender. Thanks for watching.